Hi, I'm Gabrielle Nelson. My name is Jordan. My name is Sophia. My name is Rende Gilliam. Clarence Riley. I am Gabby Giuseppe. Uh, my name is Tamika Woodall. My name is Jada Matheny. My name is Michael. Andrea. My name is Jade Frost. And I'm 17. I'm 20 years old. I'm 17 years old. I'm 19. 39 years old. I'm 20. 53 years old. I'm 18 years old. I'm 19 years old. I'm 50. Um, I'm 17. And this is my black experience. My first memory being treated differently came in middle school. Elementary school. Probably be elementary school. Nine, ten. Probably in middle school. An elementary school. Um, just kids picking on you. Uh, there was often questions about my hair. It's as if it was something to be managed instead of celebrated. Um, I was kind of bullied a lot because I had like larger lips than everybody did. I can remember having a teacher that was very mean to me. I just got to realize that she had a problem with all of the black students been called like monkey, things like that. When I was younger, I wanted to go to the library with one of my white friends and they distinctly told me that I don't go to the library with brown people. And I returned to my mom and told her I want to wash my brown off. Less than? It, it started a cycle of like internalized anti-blackness that didn't really go away until I reached high school. That was kind of surprising to me that that was the reason why she was treating me badly. Kind of internalized, kind of traumatic for me. It had an impact on me from a young age, I think. Yes, numerous times. Oh God, yes. No, I don't think so, because I don't look black. Countless of occasions. I've had a cop say it to me. I've had people in stores um, say it to me. Someone said a racial slur to me and also to someone else. Our neighbor, they had a plum tree. Mischievous guys would go and, and uh, get the plums, but they had a parrot, and the parrot was trying to say, nigger stealing, nigger stealing. It was someone that I uh, associate myself with, um, which is why I was disappointing. Well, I'm a lawyer, I'm a criminal lawyer, so I've been cursed at by police in trial work and in trial preparation. I've been called a black bitch, I've been called a nigger bitch, I've been called a coot. I was coming from the beach and a white lady called me a nigger when I was riding in the back seat because she was swerving in our lane. Um, I was at a basketball court and a car drove by. And there were about like four or five white guys in it and they all called me the harder n-word repeatedly and they slowed down just so they could. I addressed them on the point and the reason how like that hurt my feelings, how that was inappropriate. I immediately started sobbing. I'd never really experience anything so aggressive like that. And I might have caught her a, a few things to return the favor. It just, it ruins everything. Insulted. Very offended because I'm being called the N-word. It was scary. I was scared to walk home. I was infuriated. I wanted to slash her tires. Like they don't understand what the word really means. I used to not care, but after talking with my mom about it, I don't even use the word anymore. It's not right because there's meaning behind it, intending to hurt others sometimes. Obviously I don't like it. I don't even use it at all. It makes you feel uncomfortable. It's not angering, it's just disappointing. It makes me super, super uncomfortable. What is, you know, the reasoning behind why you want to say a word that is so obviously offensive to other people? If you use it and you're comfortable around me, then you might feel comfortable around someone else using the word and the effects might not be the same. This country basically is founded on the oppression of black people. And if you label people with a derogatory term, that's part of oppression. That'd be like me some calling someone a Nazi in a joking manner, or me calling someone a kite in a joking manner, and they're not. Those are not joking words. There's no positive way in which you can say that word unless you are a person of color. Um, it originates from the word negus, which is actually used in 
connotation to referring to black men as kings and African kings, but um, you know, after slavery, that word changed and it was used to dehumanize black people. I can't tell someone what not to say. It's freedom of speech, but it's also hate speech, I think. I don't think because of the color of my skin, but maybe because I'm gay. No. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Yes. Just walking around, going to stores, shopping, school, and I'm just viewed as like dangerous, uneducated. I would say in America, every black person is first thought of as black. Anybody who meets me or sees me, that's usually the first thing they're going to be struck by. Sometimes I go to the grocery store and I'm followed around for no reason. Um, my friends joking with me about my race. Um, I've been pulled over more than I probably should have been. I've been talked to differently. They, people encounter you differently when you interview for a job. Kind of like the angry black girl stereotype. Being an angry black woman, always being mad. That I'm aggressive. The assumption that black women are always angry, black women always want to fight. People thinking that I may be an overly aggressive person that I can't afford things. Loud, attitude, the f willing to fight at any cost kind of stereotypes. We can't really, as a community, get angry because it's automatically like, that's an angry black woman, or that's an angry black man. We can't express our views without being ghetto or aggressive or loud, but anyone else in any other race can without consequence or comments. You have to hold yourself to a higher standard because the rest of the world is holding you here. So you need to hold yourself up here so when you encounter them, there's no, there's no mistaking of your character and who you are. This is a battle we've been fighting since I can remember. It's seeing other people like just now become aware of it. It's kind of like, well, where were you guys? Honestly, it sucks to say this, but I've just, I've gotten really used to it like it's not a shock to me at all when I s when I see a video of a cop shooting an unarmed black man or an unarmed black woman this is something that our ancestors have been discussing and protesting about for generations and I think it's sad that it has to be negative situations that spark such huge revolutions just because the media is picking up what's really going on now doesn't mean that it hasn't been happening before I feel like my family has been fighting this battle within our family or within the black community every day of our lives. There's never been a day that I don't, I don't think about when I'm gonna be approached about the police, how I'm gonna act, how to stay calm, how to make sure he's comfortable. There's not a day or a moment when I'm not in the car that that's not a thought. I don't like to give the police that power over me, but I do. Yes and no. I know that all cops are bad, but I do fear running into that one. I do fear the wrong one approaching me and not having a good day. I do fear the police in the sense that I have a black brother, I have a black father, I have black friends. It also completely scares me in the sense that one day I could see them and the next day they could be gone. My biggest fear is being pulled over. Whenever I see a cop car, I, I just I think of the many people who have been killed for doing nothing for being unarmed, for breathing, for wearing a hoodie. When I see cases like Sandra Bland, when I see that she was arrested and hogtied, meaning brought into the precinct, tied like this, with her, her ankles cuffed and her hands tied behind her back and being brought in like a, like a dog. I'm about to break my wrist, can you stop? stop it. You are about to break my wrist, stop! Stop moving! Stop now! Stop it! Stop resisting, man. If you would stop, and I would tell you. Now stop. You are such a mom. You are such a It does make me think that that could happen to me. I remember going somewhere, and I had a tie on, and the cop stopped me. And I asked him, like, why don't you stop me? I wasn't speeding, and he told me that there's been a rash of burglaries in the area. I was like, really? So you think I'm gonna burglarize a house with a suit and tile? I mean, come on, guy. I've been 
pulled out of my car, um, knees and chest on the ground, and my car searched. From what they said, from not stopping at a stop sign, although we know we stopped at a stop sign because we were making out at the stop sign. Uh, so it was one of those moments where we knew that we were being profiled and my girlfriend at the time was white. So at that moment we knew that it, he was not comfortable with who we were and he was stopping us to, for that matter and that matter alone. Uh, I've been pulled over multiple times and just I asked the reason why and they just tell me that I fit the description of someone that's committed a crime. And I said, okay, what's the description? They said, black male in a red car. I was like, well, this is a burgundy car. And it's like, what other features the male had? They're like, uh, just black. I was like, so what are, you, what are you doing this for? I do not like that phrase at all. All lives do matter. Um, but until black lives matter just as much as white ones, you can't, we can't move on all lives matter. I agree with it because when you put black people aside from other races, you're kind of putting everybody in a box again. I think it's bullshit. I don't think people understand how insensitive it is. When people say that term, they're they're trying to demean the Black Lives Matter movement and like fully ignoring the issue at hand. Obviously, no shit, all lives matter. But if all lives mattered, I wouldn't have to say Black Lives Matter. It makes me angry because a lot of the times, people who say it aren't very educated. It makes me feel like disappointed. To me, it's not angering, it's just disappointing. It makes me feel angry because I feel like no one's not, like no one is saying that all lives don't matter. Socially, yes. In the government, no. Um, yeah, definitely. I feel like it has already. If the right people stand behind it, yes we've seen in this country change can't happen it might take time it might hurt it might not be easy and it might not be pretty but change can happen i'm reluctant to get too hopeful about change because certain things like um, the officers who killed brianna taylor still have not been arrested i think a lot of the civil rights movements that were inspired by they took months weeks years and i think we have to look at that and really fight for as long as we can because it's not going to happen overnight it's not going to happen a week it's not going to happen in a month i think it's going to take long and a long long time to reverse the damage that's been done in this country there's many things you can do whether it be just educating yourself on it to signing petitions to donating to organizations who are trying to promote like the ideology of Black Lives Matter. Inform yourselves. That you have to actively work to be anti-racist. You have to be completely against racism. You cannot stand for racism. If you hear someone being racist, you can't let them get away with it. Just talk to your children, talk to your friends, communicate. If we all start talking as uncomfortable as this conversation is, in order for the conversation to stop being uncomfortable, we have to keep talking. Sign petitions. Register to vote. Um, this documentary by Ava DuVernay called 13th. There's a book that I live by. It's called Policing the Black Man. There's a few movies you can watch. Um, 13th, Selma. One of the books is White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. Another book is Between the World and Me by Ta-Nehisi Coates. Another book is How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. Watch When They See Us, read The New Jim Crow. Listen to Pimp, uh, to, to Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar. Specifically, listen to The Black or the Berry. Uh, listen to High Power by Kendrick Lamar. The Invisible Man by Ref Allison. Um, I have some websites. I have the colorofchange.org is a good one. Uh, sojo.net, um, number8canwait.org, and also joincampaignzero.org are really good ones. Definitely go vote. I say vote. Especially in local elections, too. It's not only on the presidential level that you can make change. I think just listen to black voices. And if you're white, 
use your privilege to dismantle this system that's been in place for way too long. And if you think you don't have privilege, I promise you, you do. For the black people who grow up in predominantly white uh, environments, um, don't try to make your, don't try to water your blackness down for, to fit in or to feel white, make white people feel comfortable. You shouldn't have to feel like you have to make other people feel comfortable. You know, just live as your truest self, your blackest self, and your, uh, your kindest self. That's all I have to say. Don't be silent in any way. Don't be silent. Say what you have to say, right, wrong, however you feel. Let's get it out there. Let's put it on the tables and let's resolve it. Let's all, let's all stand up together. I mean, if we've noticed in this country, if, if we the people are stronger together than we are divided and this country itself, this country is built on us coming together. It's built on us trying to be one and realizing what's right and wrong. No, it's not going to be pretty, it's not going to be easy, and you might have to lose some friends, or you might have to lose some people that you don't like, or you do love, but at the end of the day, if they truly love you, they, they'll be back. I think that from the time that we were taken from Africa and brought here for the purpose of slavery, and have tried to be American and somehow get rights, I mean, America has abused a lot, of a lot of different groups of people and have given them, paid them reparations. The Japanese Americans, there's a lot of groups of people, Indians, who have gotten payments from the U.S. government acknowledging we have harmed your race. Black people have been here and we were supposed to get 40 acres and a mule after slavery. We've got nothing. Okay, black people set up a lot of prosperous communities in this country, which the U.S. government bombed in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in Fl Rosewood, Florida, destroying black communities of prosperity. And I really think that at some point we just have to say this relationship is not working out. I think us as Americans, you know, we don't realize how we are looked upon outside of America. It was 9-11, I was living in another country, and that's when, I mean, America got bombed. I mean, I felt so disrespected, and I just looked at it as being one America. But so often, you know, it's such a divide here in America. If something happens, or, or people around the world, they look at us as Americans, not African Americans, not Hispanic Americans, not... It's just all Americans. And I just think that, you know, we could uh, disagree uh, politically, but we don't have to be uh, divisive in those areas. I think that, you know, we still could disagree, but still be friends. And, you know, you know, let's try to come to a place of understanding. You know, let's just not just dismiss each other just because we don't agree with what a person is saying. Because I think that, you know, if we start building each other up like that, then we build a better America.